Gemini, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from September 28th to October 5th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Gemini content is uploaded. Gemini content comes out every single Thursday. If you're feeling my vibe and you would like a personal read, please feel free to check out that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. Also down there, you'll find all my social media contacts and across every single one of those social media platforms, you will get a link that takes you back to YouTube here for your daily astrology reading, your daily Elder Futhark Room, your daily Romance Angel Oracle card, your daily Fairy Wisdom Oracle card, your daily Starseed Oracle card, and your daily Priestess of Light Oracle card. All of those things can be found put together with an energy summary at the end posted here on YouTube every single day called your daily energy reading. Now, there are affirmations in each one. Well, not each one. Some of those videos. If you watch the energy summary, there's affirmations in there. Two to three of those cards end up with affirmations. Two guaranteed, one sometimes. I uh, recommend that you say those affirmations three times. We cast spells, if you will, uh, prayers, activate words to our positive benefit. However you wish to define that for yourself, whatever that looks like in what ways you're comfortable with the world, is uh, in threes, increments of threes, three, six, nine. If you even go through, even in your church, if you go through and you're a person who very firmly believes in the Bible, and hey, I am an ordained minister, so I understand. If you were to go through and just look at, say, the Eucharist ceremony, you will notice that even the prayers that are spread over the Eucharist are said in increments of three. We cast in three, six, nine, twelve, etc. Okay? We break in odd numbers not divisible by three. So can't use the number three because we cast with three, but you can use one, you can use five, you can use seven. However, you can't use 21. It's an odd number, but it's divisible by three, by seven. Right? Also can't use 15 or 12. Right? So you have to count, the, you have to do the math in order to know how to break. Okay? So those are the things. You want to bring it in. Increments of three. I say them personally, all the affirmations, three times. I do watch the videos. I make them because uh, during one Mercury retrograde, uh, you know, the affirmations I was using that I was getting from elsewhere, and I require affirmations to stay on my emotionally balanced self, uh, went missing. So I started pulling the Oracle cards for myself, so then I started pulling the Oracle cards for everybody. Might as well make them universally available. So also down there, you'll find uh, that I offer an energy reading. We've gone over that in several videos, what exactly that entails. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I do read my comments. I do respond to my comments. I also respond to all of my social media platforms and any direct messages sent to me. I just ask that you keep everything professional and respectful. I will keep everything professional and respectful with you. Also down there is a link to my Red Bubble store which you can find this mat and these stickers. These are the vinyl stickers meant for water bottles. I have uh, water bottles that I intend to repurpose that I'm going to put these on there. The logos on those bottles uh, require covering because of the various circumstances surrounding it, i.e., you know, age and appropriateness. So, Uh, yeah, I don't support a company anymore, so I'm going to repurpose the water bottle. Okay, so on the 29th, that's the first day we have to watch out for here, the full moon. It's a great time to set goals, make any promises to yourself on a deeper level. It's time for your journey to face inward. There are four full moon posts available right in this moment. Uh, you're posted on YouTube. That full moon is in Aries. It starts at 5.58 a.m. EDT. Yes, in the morning. In the morning. It's like, wow, 
for some person, I people I know, if they find themselves in the, uh, you know, Nova Scotia area, north of Eastern Daylight Time, it would be at 4.58 in the morning. Sukkot begins at sundown, which is a uh, mazel tov to anybody who celebrates. Venus, relationship-focused Venus, is in passion at Leo, i.e. we're going to want to express. It's square, 90-degree angle in the night sky. Not favorable. A Uranus, disruptive Uranus, retrograde, in foundational Taurus. Old issues will be brought up to be resolved. You get ten full moon wishes. These are things you wish to leave your life. Poverty, sadness, depression. You know, whatever you might be dealing with. Stay focused on what you're emotionally invested in. Okay? Because what you're emotionally invested in and how you're emotionally reacting to people. Staying focused on what you're emotionally uh, invested in means that if somebody's bringing you garbage that you've already given them their answer and that's not changing, you can ignore them because you're focused on this other thing over here. However, also, pay attention to how you feel when this person's around. Your body tries to tell you something. Also, pay particularly close attention to your dreams. Any dreams you've been having from the equinox, which is uh, if you're in north of the north equator, you like, you know, north of the equator was on the 23rd, south of the equator on the 22nd, okay? So pay attention from then to the full moon about your dreams. Spirit is speaking through dreams. But I did a set of oracle cards in the astrology for the equinox. I posted ceremonies that could be done if you wanted to during that time and across the different all the different platforms. The chakra oracle card for both the the equinox and the full moon is the same card be keeping a dream log pay attention spirits talking to you i don't know what it's about it's going to depend upon your situation okay on the 30th at 5 50 p.m edt we have a, a uh, void of course moon we come out of the moon in aries and into a 9 18 p.m edt into the moon of Taurus. Make a list of all the things you're grateful for. It's a weaning gibbous moon, but in both sides, Aries and then in uh, in Taurus. Mercury, messenger Mercury in practical Virgo is trying. It's 120 degree angles in the night sky. Is favorable. Disruptive Uranus in foundational Taurus. An unconventional idea or plan that you set into motion. So this is something that you did to you. You set it in motion months ago. You have to slow down and watch carefully because it's going to play out in front of your eyes. So if you don't like what happened, you get nobody to blame but yourself because you set it into motion. And if you're like me or anything like me, okay, sorry, no, I'm, I don't just consume these videos. I don't, I just I don't record these videos or consume these videos. I watch these videos. I watch my own videos for my sun, my moon, and my Venus, and my rising sun. That's three signs that I watch for of these, okay? Then I will turn around and I will go watch other readers for at least my sun and my moon because they're the same sign. And there's one that I watch. She puts out a reading almost every day. She was talking about a subject matter very similar to this coming up in the future. And at six minutes and 20 seconds into her video, she put it in the title of it. There was a disembodied voice. And I'm like, oh, it's there. And of course, I was going to watch the video anyway. But then I slowed it down and I listened carefully because I like to watch all those ghost hunting shows. All right. I'm not pretending like I'm not fascinated with that stuff. So it's right up my alley. I mean, in the month of October, which is coming up here. I will start on the channel October 1st. I will watch one horror movie every single night and might write a movie review on it for the next 30 days. Because I like horror movies just that much. And I'm, okay, I got to tell you, I have to keep a spreadsheet because I've watched so many. I let Netflix pick at this point. Even if it's garbage. That's very Mystery Science Theater 3000, I have to say. That's what you're getting when you're doing it. Like, it's to a place where I'm not really giving anything away, but if you sat down and watched the movie and actually had my review up, which I know is not realistic, not pretending like it is, you would be able to tell exactly what's going on in the movie. 
You would understand in that moment why I'm reacting that way. You might not agree, but you would understand. Okay, I have a lot of fun doing it. I find it to be very amusing, as you can hear in the sound of my voice. This idea actually makes me a little frightened. Because my life, like six months ago, that's what the voice said. It was within six months or in the last six months. The six months part was real clear. The beginning part, it was sort of slurred kind of together. It was kind of slurred together, the, the, uh, the voice, okay? So it was hard for me to tell. Six months ago was in March. What were you doing in March, in case that's right? What were you trying to manifest in March? Me? Oh, man, no. I don't, I don't remember. And my life was very different in March. Whatever that was, I don't think I want it anymore. I'm busy over here with the life I want to have. Thanks. Whew. Makes me a little frightened. On the second, we have a waning gibbous moon in Taurus all day long so where our feels are going to be about our practical everyday life at 9 20 p.m we're going to have a void of course moon which means the Taurus is going to be in that sign in the in play in moon in that state the waning gibbous state for two straight days really it's just going to, it's going to start at 9 18 p.m you went into Taurus at 9 18 p.m on the 30th and on the second it's going to leave at 9 20 p.m. It's almost two straight days. We're definitely going to be in our fields. Messenger Mercury, thinking about the practical, about the practical stuff, our daily life, what we have to do. Messenger Mercury in practical Virgo. It's opposite, 180 degrees in the night sky. Wanting to talk about something that we, you know, want to accomplish. But it, it's uh, opposite, 180 degrees in the night sky is not favorable. Neptune, the planet of illusion in dreamy Pisces. Focus is not achievable this day, Okay. You're going to be scattered. Your energy is going to be scattered, especially yours. Because Mercury is your ruler. Leave yourself extra time to do everything. It's a day for autopilot. You don't want to try to get clever. Just get through the day. Okay, on the 3rd, at 1.03 a.m., that waning gibbous moon goes into Gemini. So now, especially you. You know, because sun in Gemini, moon in Gemini, you're really going to be affected. Messenger Mercury in practical Virgo. Again, a lot of Mercury energy. It's trine. That's favorable. 120 degrees in the night sky. Transformative Pluto retrograde in strict Capricorn. So it's favorable to karma. And you're like, what do you mean? Karma is how spirit teaches us. So it's favorable for spirit to teach us lessons. And spirit has been teaching us lessons. I personally have been learning how I should have handled Two different situations that were happening at the same time last year. Two stressors happening at the same time exactly one year ago. Literally the same being and the same object. And I'm learning exactly how I should have responded to them. It's amazing. It's amazing to me. It's, it's fantastical. I mean, and so ideas, especially for you, ideas are going to come at you in a bum rush. Right? And, but you need to investigate them thoroughly. You need to talk them out thoroughly. You might find yourself better able to talk something out than to like write something out or journal or whatever. You might need to talk to somebody about those ideas to thoroughly vet them to find the one that you can build on. All right, But you really, really need to auger in and dig deep. Leave no stone unturned because there is an undercurrent of karmic interaction there. There's an infection. You need to ferret it out so you can heal it. Get, to, get it done. Get it in there, right? Because that's what spirit really wants us to do. Excise the wound. Gemini, September 28th to October 5th. 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 If you are returning viewer, welcome back. I will clarify all these cards. If you are 
a new viewer welcome past present near future someone to you you to the someone balance outcome summary I know this fast it's okay we're gonna go over it nice and slow okay there is no gender in tarot you are either walking up to someone and talking or someone is walking up to you and talking and this whole reading is a conversation between you and at least one other person some cards do mean groups also on this channel relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people I'm going to describe energy. We're going to place it on the person that sounds like you're going to place it on the person that sounds like in your life. And then that's the relationship we are talking about. <laughs> oh, goodness. Plethora of communication coming in. Nothing but mutable signs today or, or cardinal signs. Fixed signs on the cusp of mutable signs. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a mutable side, but I am surrounded by mutable energy. It's part of how spirit is making me stretch and grow. Okay, so. Five of Wands there in your past. It was some sort of conflict, Gemini. What happened? Some sort of heated argument? Somebody got all up in your business? Did you have to smack some people in the face? Five of Wands is a competitive job, too. Maybe you were up. Maybe you had to go do a, an interview or something, right? So if some sort of competition happening, it's a competitive job, like a sales job, or it's a, a competition, like an athlete would be in. It's also um, gossip. It's politics, world politics, office politics. It's people not minding their own business. It's a group of people. They might be jerkwads. Look, they're in prison orange. Okay, they're not exactly known for their judgment. Some sort of heated yelling match it can be. Or even a fist fight. Did you get into some kind of heated argument? Knight of Wands. Any fire sign? Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Heavy on that Sagittarius. Also, card of Scorpio. Maybe with a Scorpio. Maybe over a Scorpio or a fire sign. Maybe you just have a lot of fire in your chart. I know a Gemini sun. Sagittarius moon. Venus and Aries. And his Mars is in Leo. So he is fire-tastic. Maybe you just got a lot of energy. Very focused. Very driven. Driven and feeling competitive about it even. Ace of Wands. Some passionate new start. Maybe you got an opportunity for something. And you just got a fire lit up under your butt to go get it. And you weren't afraid to knock other people down to go get it. Because it's a competitive job. Could be that kind of energy. Certainly could carry that kind of energy. Nine of Wands, that's more of that Sagittarius energy. You are on fire. This is the hill I'm willing to die on. You're ready to fight off some people with a flaming stick. So what is that about, Gemini? Got a chip on your shoulder? Peep how her shoulder is literally exposed to the elements. Devil card, Capricorn energy. There's toxicity afoot in your near future or you're dealing with with the Capricorn and the Taurus Hierophant energy is Taurus energy it's uh, also card of higher education higher learning and the divine this is a, their ascended master this uh, this Jacob's ladder to the seat of life and it's like literally almost like getting the the devil and the angel are you debating two things you've got the little peoples on your shoulders you've been influenced not sure which path to go down Gemini you debating two things. Your demon and your angel fighting. Eight of swords. That's somebody being all up in their head. They feel trapped. They're not really, but they feel it. Queen of swords. It's any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on the Libra. Also card of Virgo. So you could be interacting with that. Or you could be just in your head over heart decision mode based upon this person's anxiousness. Uh, Ten of Cups, it could be somebody in your friends and family unit. Or balance from the situation could be found in someone else stepping in. Ten of Cups, because it is a group. Ten of Wands, it's a burden. Trying to set down a burden. I would look up the angel number 1010. And 58. Because I find that to be very interesting. This is not, this is a lot of major arcanas. I mean, to be going through a reading and to have nothing but arcanas and court cards except for one, two, three, four cards out of 13, that's high. 
okay? Some sort of opportunity that's going to arise here, possibly from a friends and family unit, that's going to help you set down a bird and ten of wands. Could be coming from a queen of pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Capricorn, it's the devil card is. And notice that they're like one on top of the other. It's also a card of Sagittarius, which is the Knight of Wands is. Triple Sagittarius energy, double Capricorn. Taurus can totally go into the Queen of Swords. It's a Hierophant energy. Strength card is Leo energy. The, the Divine can require you to be strong right now. The Devil might be messing with your money. So, and also an alternative in case that's, you feel like money's tight or your money focused. What's this Five of Wands in Gemini's... Uh, I saw that. What's this Five of Wands in Gemini's past? Unexpected income. So you could have been given an opportunity to compete for a job. What's this Five of Wands? Nine of Wands. What's this Five of Wands? Yeah, you might not have liked that energy. Yeah, what's this Five of Wands? Somebody made you feel defensive about money. Somebody at work made you feel defensive. Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Virgo. Also card of Leo. It's a card slowly moving forward. Slowly moving on. Could have been that this argument was with whoever this Knight of Pentacles is. Somebody moving very slow. But feeling defensive could be on the subject matter of work and money. Take that as it resonates. What's this Knight of Wands? Someone is at front door. Hang on a second, Gemini. All right. I'm all back, Gemini. I'm having company come over and somebody was just a tad bit too early. Welcomed, though. Very welcomed. What is this Knight of Wands in Gemini's past? What are you doing here? What is this Knight of Wands? You could have been focused on work. After whatever this argument was with this person. The world card, star card. What is this knight of wands? You might have had to travel. Maybe you had to travel for work. Two of wands. You were standing at some sort of crossroads. Focus maybe on some wish fulfillment. Or maybe you felt the element of the divine. Because you got a lot of divine energy running around this reading. So world card. Could have something to do with travel, completion. I mean, it feels just like you decided to really focus on work. You might have had to travel. Maybe you changed jobs. Maybe you, you know, healed something within a, a money situation. Because, you know, this right here, it's like getting the eight. This is the eight of pentacles. It's the same energy. So it feels like, an, you know, the knight of wands is there for a good time, not a long time. But they're also, when it's time to focus on work, they get really focused that way. So you could have been standing at a crossroads within a work situation and really just decided to buckle down and focus on money. What's this Ace of Wands? There could have been some opportunity. Privileged Lady. That is a Empress card. So it's Libra, Taurus, Energy. Um, but it's, it's also a card of mother. So you could be a mother. It could be the mother of your children. It could be your mother. What is this Ace of Wands? Ten of Wands, Seven of Cups. What's this Ace of Wands? Ace of Cups. Okay, so there's some sort of opportunity here that came up in your past. Some sort of uh, passionate yet emotional sort of thing. That An opportunity presenting. Ten of Wands. Maybe it would let you set down a burden. Which is ultimately in your outcome here, Ten of Wands, Seven of Cups. If there was confusion surrounding this opportunity, maybe you didn't quite understand what you needed to do. What's this Nine of Wands? Well, maybe there's something else you had to finish first. Nine of Wands are concerned. Some concern popping up in your present moment makes you feel defensive. What's this Nine of Wands? It's something you felt defensive about before, since you were feeling defensive here somewhere in your past, right? There you go, nine of wands. Whatever that is, you're feeling defensive about it in your past, you're feeling defensive about it in your future, or your present moment, I should say. What's this nine of wands? What's this nine of wands? Yeah, knight of wands and the tower. 
Okay, so you're feeling defensive in your present moment about some situation that you've been dealing with before, already in your past, right? That's cropping back up, just like I said, the full moon is going to bring you, right? Knight of Wands, because of some impetuous energy, some, you know, inconsistent energy, maybe even some player energy. Take that as it resonates for you, that's going to be causing a tower. Some engaged behavior, behavior that you've been engaging in already and you're carrying into your present moment brings about a tower or theirs. Take it as it resonates. What's this devil card? It's Capricorn energy. It's also cancer energy there with the change. What's this devil card? What's this devil card? What's this devil card? What's this devil card? Wheel of Fortune. Death card. Scorpio energy. So Scorpio, Cancer, Capricorn. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. So some travel, motion, movement, change, ending, potentially. Something is a matter of divine timing. The divine is either uh, invoking some sort of critical thinking about some kind of toxicity or some sort of Capricorn. That where it's bringing about some sort of motion, movement, travel, change. It could be an ending, could be a rebirth. The death card is always like that. I don't know. If it's toxicity, it's a hopeful that it's ending and it's not a rebirth. What is this Hierophant card? In Gemini's... Future soul lovers, that's your energy, Gemini energy. So the divine's talking to you. What is this Hierophant card? It can be on a contract, document, paperwork, marriage, partnership, Eight of Wands, King of Cups. What is this Hierophant card? King of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Scorpio. This is death card is, but also card of Libra. Libra, the other half of Venus, could be having to deal with a mother or mother energy. There's some higher perspective that you need to be getting about some sort of relationship or choice that you're making. Because the communication is going to come in guided by the divine from the King of Cups. Whoever that is for you. Don't pay any attention to the gender. There is no gender in tarot. It's just going to be a person who embodies the King of Cups energy. What is this Eight of Swords in Gemini's future? They're in their head. Talking about stability, a house, a home. What is this Eight of Swords? Five of Swords. No, that's way too many cards. What's this Eight of Swords? What's this Eight of Swords? What's this Eight of Swords? Queen of Wands, any fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Aries. Also card of Libra and a card of Pisces. Guys, some sort of argument because somebody's up in their head about something to do with the stability of house home. And they're going to argue with you, Queen of Swords, because you're in this Queen of Swords energy over here. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra. Also a card of Virgo. So you could, again, could be interacting with a Virgo. The two of you could both be in some, some Queen of Swords energy, which would lead to an argument. But they're going to bring it to you. But see how they got their swords up? I've got a feeling like they're feeling defensive. They're feeling aggressive. That's why they're bringing you the argument, Five Swords. And their sword is up, but your sword is down. So they might be feeling crabby, whereas for you might feel detached, emotionally detached. What is this Queen of Swords? You might not feel like their problem is your problem. Toil and labor, yeah, because you're all over here just focusing on work. It's like getting the Eight of Pentacles again. What is this Queen of Swords? Page of Cups, what is this Queen of Swords? What is this Queen of Swords? What is this Queen of Swords? That's interesting. The Sun card. Okay, it's interesting because <laughs> you got the Emperor card that dropped here. 
right? The emperor is every king put together, the empress is every queen put together, and you definitely have, you know, the empress already roaming around and being represented here in your past of what you were dealing with here. So, that's very interesting to me. Having to make a head over hard decision, maybe even make an apology to a boss, or maybe a boss makes an apology to you. You could be a father. This could be your father. It could be a, the father of your children. It's a father figure of some kind. They could be a father. But something being illuminated for you in this communication from this person who's going to want to come talk to you. It's going to create this argument here. Something about this argument is going to reveal something to you. Sun car. Something that maybe you didn't realize before about this person. Ten of Cups here. What's this Ten of Cups? This person's in your friends and family unit. Message of concern. What's this Ten of Cups? What's this Ten of Cups? What's this Ten of Cups? That's interesting. Why is that card in reverse? It shouldn't be. What's this Ten of Cups? Justice card, Libra energy. Libra energy running all over the place here. Both those cards are cards of Libra. Contract, document, paperwork, marriage. Balance. Balance within a home. Message of concern. All right, some, some worrying about not having victory because the six of ones in reverse. Not being able to bring balance between a new opportunity and a contract document paperwork marriage. Worried that you're not going to be able to have both. What's this Ten of Wands? And you were really hoping to set down some sort of burden. Marriage card. What's this Ten of Wands? Contract document paperwork marriage. Three, it's like getting the Three of Pentacles. What's this Ten of Wands? What's this Ten of Wands? So we're going to find out more about this burden with the Strength card. Two of Pentacles and this Page of Pentacles. So you're, you feel like you're trying to juggle some sort of commitment that feels like a burden here. Could be at work. Maybe you're trying to juggle work, home, life. That would be an, a solid example. You're needing to be strong because of this burden in order to take up this opportunity that you're really hoping brings about an end to this burden, Ten of Wands. What's this Page of Pentacles? Mature woman, that's like getting the Queen of Cups. It's your energy. What's this Page of Pentacles? The opportunity is coming to you. What's this Page of Pentacles? What's this Page of Pentacles? You're looking out towards your future, Page of Pentacles. Yeah, there's something that's unequal right now. What's this Page of Pentacles going on in your life that you're not interested? Six of Pentacles. It's unequal give and take. Four of Cups. It's not being interested. You're not interested in, in continuing this unequal give and take into your future, Three of Wands. So you're looking for an opportunity that lets you get out of it. That you get out of whatever this is. Set down this burden. Maybe you need a different commitment, a new contract. Uh, what's this Queen of Pentacles? A different contract. Queen of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo, no, I'm sorry, heavy on the Capricorn. Also card of Sagittarius, despair there though. All right, this person. Right, maybe they don't like the idea of the change. What's this Queen of Pentacles? Maybe they were, you know, profiting off of the, yeah, the lies. Seven of Swords. What's this Queen of Pentacles? This person is shifty. The lovers. This Gemini energy. Eight of Cups. Yeah, this person here with the death card that we have attached with this. This change. This King of Swords. This devil card energy that's toxic here in your near future. They're going to be sad. Because Seven of Swords, lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. You're going to know about the choice here. Either they're going to know about your choice to engage in this poor behavior, or you're going to know about their choice to engage in this poor behavior. Take it as it resonates. Eight of Cups, and somebody's walking away. 
somebody's walking away here. Because there's not a victory. Not a victory over this. This is almost like a nobody wins situation. It's all start stemming from that tower that you're going to have here. What's the strength card? Bad health. Yeah, you're going to need to be strong because there's toxicity here. What's the strength card? Ten of Cups. Within the friends and family unit, what's the strength card? Could be dealing with a Leo in that uh, situation. Temperance, Sagittarius energy, Knight, uh, King of Pentacles. Any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Taurus. Also, card of Aries. Peep the King and Queen of Pentacles. So this could be... If this is a relationship reading for you, this would be your your spouse, whoever they are for you. If it's a business one, or you know, like if this is a friendship, this is your best friend. If this is, uh, you know, love, it's your marriage, or your romantic partner. If it's a business, it's your business partner. It's not anybody else in the firm. Whatever that spells out for you. You're going to need to be strong through this. Because there is something wrong here that needs to get be ferreted out. It's going to start with this tower. I think there's going to be arguments. You're going to need to be strong in order to flush out this toxicity. Advice for Gemini. September 28th to October 5th. Advice for Gemini. September 28th to October 5th. Page of Wands. Advice for Gemini. Page of Wands, Five of Cups, Four of Swords. Some communication is going to come in. Somebody might be coming in hot and immature. Five of Cups are they're going to make you feel sad. Four of Swords, you might need to take a break. You might need to have some separation from this person, Four of Swords. But let it fall. Towers happen for us, not to us. You don't need it. Advice. Or I should say message. This is really message. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. I'm going to pull three cards. It's your opportunity to think of one to three yes or no questions you might want answered. Message for Gemini. Within the next few months, it's a yes. Opportunity, it's also a yes. Since whatever this is, it's likely to continue for months. And yes, emphatically yes. So that's absolutely a yes. Yes with a delay and then just yes. Message, or I should say advice. Advice for Gemini. September 28th to October 1st. 5th. 5th, not 1st. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. Advice for Gemini. That's, uh, that would be happening in uh, what's the opposite of Capricorn that would have happened in cancer season advice for Gemini so July of next year advice for Gemini September 28th to October 5th nothing is yet set in stone mutable moon that's what you are what is this advice for Gemini September 28th to October 5th adjustments are required third quarter moon it certainly sounds like it but you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck Nothing will come of this situation, Void of Courtesman. Do not let this person get you all up in your feels. It's not worth your energy. A person will issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. Emotions are running high, super moon. Take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. This is nothing but endings. Endings. Endings because things need to change. It can't stay, so don't fight it, Gemini. Message. It's too many. Message for Gemini. Towers happen for us, not to us. It seems to me like over the last year, you guys have been running around really hard trying to avoid towers. I suggest you stop that before spirit rips them away painfully. Fairy doors. Fairy land is an in-between place, but you come close to its borders every day. A ring of stones, a doorway, a circle of mushrooms, the entry points for our magical world. Hold the answers you seek. I hope that helps, Gemini, because it's what I have for you. Just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe. No less. 
than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.